Well, hello there, everybody. Uh, welcome back to another part here um, on science and the Bible. And uh, sort of picking up from where we left off, uh, we're looking at uh, scientism versus theism. And uh, we're really interested in what part miracles have to play in science. And so that continues sort of with our theme on the limitations of science. Okay, so we've looked at some limitations in science. For example, we looked at uh, the fact that we have to use circumstantial evidence when we're dealing with the historical uh, sciences, and that when we use circumstantial uh, sort of evidence, uh, there are various um, levels of persuasion involved. It's very different from doing science uh, where we can uh, conduct experiments and uh, where the observations are repeatable. But there are other limitations as well. And uh, I want to talk about uh, scientism briefly. So uh, scientism uh, is basically uh, the idea that uh, science alone has the authority to give us uh, all our knowledge. Uh, there's no such thing as God. There's no such thing as the supernatural. There's no such thing as miracles. And everything can be explained uh, materialistically by appealing to naturalistic laws. Uh, so that's kind of what scientism is. And it's important for us to realize that uh, science is good. Science is a process. We've already looked at science and how it's very effective at finding things out about the physical universe. But scientism is a belief system. It's like theism. Uh, so if you go into science and you believe that science is going to give you all of the answers for the universe, then you believe in scientism because what you're doing is in effect you're denying that there's a God and you're denying that that God has intervened at some point in the past. I mean, ultimately, you can't know that uh, through science. And so uh, you are putting forward you're being very presuppositional in your uh, belief system. Okay, so looking at uh, science uh, in and of itself, um, we don't want to be accepting of scientism. Okay, science is good. Scientism is a belief system. Uh, science is good. Um, but in and of itself, it can only tell us things about the physical universe. Uh, so it can tell me uh, about what constituents the universe is made out of. It can tell me uh, what the uh, acceleration is going to be for an object under the influence of Earth's gravity coming towards the ground. Uh, it can tell me uh, things about uh, the past, again, in a limited sense, because we're talking about uh, circumstantial sort of evidence. Um, so it can tell me a lot of things about the physical universe. But what it can't tell me about is things that are spiritual or immaterial. So science is limited, uh, for example, in what is love. Sometimes people think that science can actually somehow define that and, and um, discuss that scientifically, but you can't. Uh, science uh, really can't define beauty. So you can't pick a, uh, a painting and science can't dictate whether that painting is actually beautiful or ugly. Uh, that is something that's subjective. Uh, science can't tell you uh, about, um, can't test things like God. So there are definitely limitations in science. It's only, it's only dealing with the physical universe and not things that are immaterial. So it's important to keep that in mind. Okay, so we're good with that. Um, but uh, what about questions related to origins? Uh, for example, issues of evolution versus special creation. And here's a question uh, for you, the audience. Do you think that an unbiased commitment to science will prove that the earth is young and that God is the creator? So I want you to, to maybe just pause the video at this point and stop and ask that question to yourself. If you're completely unbiased, and you're a scientist, would you be able to show that indeed the Earth is young? Okay, so hopefully you've thought about that. This is actually a quote from 
uh, some well-known, uh, very well-known creationists, and they said this, if a person were given science tools but had no preconceived notions about the universe, would purely objective observations lead that person to believe in a billions of years old Earth and universe? By no means, since so many features look so young. So, um, is, is this statement true? And I don't believe it is, and I'll show you why um, here. So we're all familiar with the miracle of where Jesus turned water into wine. In fact, Jesus did many other miracles like that. Uh, he created bread, fish, uh, flesh, uh, all um, very rapidly, very quickly, and obviously miraculously. Uh, so uh, in the story where Jesus turns water into wine, I'm quoting from John 2 here, it says, when the master of the feast tasted the water now become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first, and when people have drunk freely, then the poor wine, but you've kept the good wine until now. So clearly, uh, this uh, person at the feast, obviously, a lot of these people were experts in wine, and he was quite convinced that the wine was real. In fact, not only real, but it was probably uh, something that um, it was aged. It was well fermented, uh, hence it being good wine. Okay, so now let's think about if we had access to a glass of that wine and we were able to take it to a lab, what kinds of scientific um, conclusions would we come to if we studied that wine scientifically? And I think that we would not find anything unusual in the wine. I think that we would be as convinced about the historicity of the wine as the master of the feast was. We would look into the wine, we'd see different parts of different kinds of uh, very, very small parts, bi uh, uh, biological elements of uh, the grapes that are used, uh, some of the reactions, biological reactions that are used with enzymes are going on. Um, and we'd be able to make some and draw some conclusions based on the wine. Um, we'd be able to sort of draw some conclusions about that wine's history. But of course, we'd be wrong because the wine was supernaturally created. Um, in fact, I don't think that if we look at the wine, and of course, I don't know for certain because we don't have any, but I don't think there was anything unusual about the wine. I think that uh, it would be foolish, for example, to to have a glass of Jesus's wine for the purpose of looking for the miracle. Um, so if you have a glass of Jesus's wine and you're a creationist and you want to prove that this wine was made in two seconds, I think it would be foolish to try and do that. And I think if we sort of think about that for a moment, I think we would agree that that would be the case. Well, what about our planet? So stop and think about that for a moment. Um, our planet, according to Genesis 1, was made in two days. That's right, not even six. Uh, by day three, the earth was already there, which means that God created an entire planet with a differentiated core, mantle, and crust in 48 hours. So, think of, just, just think about this for a moment. Um, in the same kind of analogy with the wine, if we were to take a portion of the earth that was created during creation week and we were to conduct experiments on that, what would we expect to find? And in fact, you can do that. You can go out to the Canadian Shield and uh, there are vast amounts of Proterozoic rocks out there. You can pick them up and hold them in your hand and they're actually supernaturally created rocks. But is there going to be anything unusual about those rocks? And I would say that there's not. In fact, I haven't read anything in any papers uh, of any supernatural scars, so to speak, that exist in those rocks. Those rocks are just as uh, usual as any other kind of rock, even rocks that were made after creation week. The geochemistry in those rocks uh, is based on and accords with the natural laws that we see occurring today. So there's nothing unusual about I don't, I don't believe there's anything unusual about Creation Week rocks.
Uh, clearly, God said that he created it in two days, and there is no natural process that can account for a full differentiation of a planet in 48 hours. It's impossible. Yet, this is a miracle, and we're sort of supposed to believe it as a miracle. So, just keep, keep pondering these things, and keep pondering this statement. If a person were given science tools but had uh, no preconceived notions about the universe, would purely objective observations give that person to believe in a billions of years old Earth universe? If they were looking at those rocks, those creation week rocks, really? If they were had completely unbiased, what conclusions would they come to? I believe that they would come to the same conclusions that the master of the feast did. They would conclude that this these rocks formed over a very, very long time. Why? Because they have experienced these kinds of processes in the present. We see, uh, for example, basaltic rock forming on the ocean floor. We've done experiments on granitic rocks. We can make them in labs from, uh, from uh, um, mantle rocks. We can actually make granitic rocks from mantle rocks by heating them up. We're aware of the processes that do that, but we know it takes a lot of time. Now, I want to stop here and uh, just kind of bring to a halt any kind of thinking that I'm suggesting that God made the earth look old. God did not make the earth look old any, any more than Jesus made the wine look old. Jesus made wine miraculously. It is the master of the feast who interpreted the wine in terms of history. Jesus didn't make it that way. That's his interpretation. All the master of the feast had to do would come and ask Jesus. Now, it's up to, I, I don't know if the master of the feast would have actually believed Jesus, but Jesus could have told him, hey, I just made it in two seconds. And then it's up to the individual to believe that. But our experience is what causes us to think things look old. God wasn't making the earth look old. He just made it miraculously, supernaturally. And a lot of process was involved in that. And of course, since we interpret processes in the present, if we, if we uh, uh, take the processes we see in the present, in other words, if we go by our experience, then I believe that an unbiased person will have no alternative but to come to a conclusion that the earth is ancient, just based on the geochemistry in the rocks. But again, there's nothing unusual about that. We see lots of examples of this in scripture. And I think uh, all this comes down to is a doctrine of mature creationism. The reality is that God created a mature universe. And um, what's sort of a little um, uh, discouraging is that in young earth creationist circles, this doctrine is sort of poo-pooed a bit. I mean, um, a lot of young earth creationists, they know that some kind of mature creationism went on, but we're, we're so invested in proving that the Bible is true, that we want to find in supernaturally created rocks proof that indeed the earth is young. When it's kind of it's kind of a bit like looking at Jesus' wine or opening up one of Jesus' fish and pulling out bones and trying to somehow see the scars of supernaturalism in them. I don't think you can do that. And I don't think you can do it with the earth. And so that's why I think this statement here is not true. I appreciate um, young earth creationists um, and their desire to show that in fact scripture is true, but I think we've got to be very careful about how we do that. So let's talk about this a little bit more. Um, first of all, in this class, um, I firmly believe that theology trumps science. Uh, actually, that's from a slide from my class. You are my class. You're just my watchers today because this is a special series. So uh, not in this class, but in this series. Uh, and to you, my audience, I firmly believe that theology trumps the science. Um, in other words, even though the scientific evidence points in one direction, I must ignore that. And instead, I must simply believe what the scriptures teach. That's what it means that theology trumps science. And this would be absolutely true in anything that was created supernaturally. And it's, oh, oh yeah. And so we want to have a look here at uh, Hebrews 11.3 because this is exactly what the scriptures uh, teach. Um, 
Hebrews 11.3 says, By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God. Note that the author is not calling our attention to physical processes, some kind of uh, scientific reasoning. He's calling us to believe the account as it's written in Genesis. And we could do the same thing with Jesus' wine, fish, and bread. Notice I've, I basically inserted those words in that verse. By faith we understand that Jesus' wine was created by the word of God. By faith we understand that Jesus' fish and bread was created by the word of God. Um, it would be foolish to try and dissect these things to somehow prove that God had created them in a few seconds. We're not, it's not intended for us to do that. The Bible clearly gives us the intention. When it comes to things that God made supernaturally, in other words, outside of the realm of science, then our responsibility is to simply believe it, to have faith and accept it. Okay, and it's not just me that believes that. So, uh, pastor, teacher, and writer John MacArthur, he says the same thing. He says this, You can't explain creation by any natural scientific method. It was the most massive supernatural miracle that ever took place. And again, he goes on to say, MacArthur, he goes on to say, Don't we have to apply science to the Genesis account? And I say it again, you can't apply science to a miracle. It's impossible. And so, um, that's not just me who believes that. Obviously, John MacArthur gets it. Well, that brings us then to this question. What's the point of doing creation science? If I can't prove that the Earth, for example, is young, then what's the point? Well, uh, this first quote here, creation science shows that the Bible is right and the Earth is young. This is not the way we should be approaching creation science. Okay? Okay. Um, that is a mistake that a lot of young earth creationists make. Rather, it should be, according to the second quote, creation science shows that the physical universe accords with biblical revelation. Well, what does that mean? What does it mean that it accords with biblical revelation? Well, when necessary, when we're dealing with the miraculous creation of the universe, creation science appeals to scripture to show that a mature creative universe accords with the Bible. We don't start with science to prove that the Bible is right when we're talking about the miraculously created universe. And this is, uh, this is really, really important for anything that was made supernaturally. We have to go to the scriptures and we have to also believe in a doctrine of mature creationism. Now, I know there are lots of different forms of mature creationism out there. And um, I don't think any of them are really, um, uh, are really cohesive in that they have a very well-worked-out uh, way of dealing with mature creationism. I am working on that. I'm putting together another book, and that's what it's going to be on because... I do think I've got a way of working it out where we can accept fully uh, a, the doctrine of mature creationism because it's in scripture, um, but where we also don't have to throw science out either. Unfortunately, uh, in the last couple of decades or so, uh, young earth creationists, uh, as I said earlier, sort of poo-pooed that idea of, of mature creationism and are trying to apply science to supernaturally created things. And I just don't think that's the way to go. Okay, secondly, uh, creation science should be able to show that post-creation week events only go back to about sort of six to 10,000 years ago. Uh, the fossil record, as an example, should be uh, scientifically able to support and accord with biblical revelation. And the third one here, since the Bible speaks about a worldwide catastrophic flood, Creation science should be able to show that many other areas of post-creation weak geology and biology also accord with, not prove, Scripture's faithfulness. And an example of that would be, for example, the soft tissues that they found in dinosaur remains. So I've done a couple of videos that you can find on my channel. I've also written a paper on this. I've written something on my blog. Uh, this is fantastic evidence that the biosphere is indeed young. Those dinosaurs 
uh, are not millions of years old. And this fully accords with Scripture. However, that the earth happens to look old also fully accords with Scripture. Notice, the science behind the soft tissue accords with Scripture. The theology behind a, a mature creation also accords with Scripture. You've got to be very careful uh, when we're dealing uh, in areas of science and theology. Um, the take-home here, oh, before I go there, um, keep in mind that uh, it's not that Christians deny evidence. Uh, we don't deny evidence, or creationists don't deny evidence. It's that uh, they are subject, we are subject, to a higher, more authoritative form of evidence. Scripture. Scripture is a form of evidence just like scientific evidence. Who's to say one is more authoritative than the other, at least from an outside secular perspective? You can't do that. Um, of course, Christians, with our presupposition, accept that Scripture is the ultimate authority, is the ultimate evidence. And nothing that I've said is contradictory. Think about what I've said. Everything makes sense uh, uh, from a biblical perspective, but also from a rationalistic perspective. It's not contradictory. It simply comes down to where are we going to place our authority. And that's kind of really what I want to leave us with here today. The idea that ultimately uh, our authority uh, must be in the Holy Scriptures. Okay, well that's it for this um, section. I think the next section we're going to start and look at areas of uh, evolution uh, and some also some of the philosophy behind evolution, starting uh, even with uh, Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle. Okay, uh, great to have you with us. Uh, don't forget, please, uh, if you enjoyed the video, enjoying the other videos that I have, I really would appreciate if you could hit that like button, subscribe, hit the bell, and of course, um, I'd ask that you pray for me. Uh, please, uh, I see this as a ministry uh, for the purpose of uh, aiding um, not just young earth creationism, but Christians in general, as we all struggle uh, with uh, so many different scientific and philosophical and even theological issues that are out there. Uh, and I want to do it in a way that is conducive to uh, critical thinking, uh, but yet um, making sure that we don't go outside the bounds of Scripture. So please, pray for me right now. That would be much appreciated. Thank you. And goodbye.